I mean, there are alternatives to this legislation, and I think that uh, Senator Bond did a very good job of outlining the impact that this legislation would have on the economy of our country. Uh, this may be the most single significant piece of legislation that's come before this committee, touching every sector of the economy and having an immense energy, economic, environmental, and national security consequence. Yet despite our requests of earlier this year, the committee plans no legislative hearings on specific bill text. Rather, we will proceed with conceptual hearings only, and now I am told we will proceed to a markup and final vote on November the 3rd. I note that on legislation of significant importance, the Senate has a history of expending the time and consideration necessary to achieve broad bipartisan support before reporting legislation out of committee. For example, when considering the American Clean Energy Leadership Act, the Senate Energy Committee held 19 formal hearings and 11 open business meetings over a span of five and a half months before favorably reporting out a bill, a bipartisan bill. Following a similar process during consideration of this legislation is important because we cannot afford to get it wrong. At this point, we do not fully understand how this legislation will impact GDP or the price, supply, and reliability of electricity, gasoline, and other commodities the millions of Americans are going to have to pay. Once more, we don't know if the bill will have any appreciable impact on climate change. EPA's recent economic analysis of the bill fails to provide answers to these questions. Instead, it compares and contrasts various provisions of 1733 with the maximum uh, uh, Markey bill. First, a credible legislative process on Kerry Boxer cannot be supported by a piecemeal analysis based upon estimates from the House bill. Second, EPA did not model all the waxman markey's provisions and included in their assessment assumptions concerning the time and timing availability of clean energy technologies, uh, CCS nuclear, and offsets that defy technological, <coughs> practical, and political realities. We do have a comprehensive analysis from various outside groups on the possible impacts. For example, the American Council for Capital Formation has concluded by 2020 the House bill could reduce household income in my state of over uh, $261 per year, increase energy costs up to 20 percent, and result in a net of loss of more than 100,000 jobs. Uh, I've been working with the EPA for a number of months to correct these deficiencies. And while we made progress on that front, we now face a hurried political agenda. Yeah. At this stage of the game, Good, I think the most important thing is that we get a comprehensive analysis on this bill before we proceed to markup. And only the chairman of this committee and the administration can make this possible. Uh, I recall when I had the clear skies legislation before this committee that the members on the other side of the aisle insisted that they have analysis of their perspective bills before we marked up the Clear Skies legislation. They delayed the markup on three occasions. It was over a two or three month uh, period, in spite of the fact that we provided 10,000 pages of analysis. Uh, Madam Chairman, I made the point the last time around, and that was that we needed the EPA to do the analysis, complete analysis, before this bill went to the floor. And I I think you realized what a disaster it was when it hit the floor because of the few number of the members of the United States Senate that actually supported it. In closing, I reference an October 21, 2009 New York Times article by John Broder, which states in regard to Copenhagen, the United, quote, the United States and many other countries have concluded that it is more useful to take incremental steps toward a global agreement rather than try to jam down it through a treaty. The article goes on to say, U.S. officials and congressional leaders have said that final legislative action on a climate bill would not occur before the first half of next year. So, Madam Chair, the question I have for you and Senator Kerry and the other members of this committee, why are we trying to jam down this legislation now? Wouldn't it be smarter, wouldn't it be smarter to take our time and do it right like we didn't do it the last time around that we had this legislation before us? Thank you, Senator. I'm going to answer a couple of things you said. I think it's important. Number one, in terms of process, the committee rules say you have to have a bill out for three days.